Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video of Sword Art Online War of the Underworld 2 uh, episode number 6. Now uh, in the previous episode things were starting to get better for our team that is for Kirito's team and uh, I think uh, Kirito will probably wake up gradually in today's episode or tomorrow's episode uh, I mean not tomorrow sorry in the, uh, today's episode or in the next episode so yeah it uh, it's finally like uh, we're finally looking at the good sides uh, that are awaiting the good sides for so many uh, episodes and we were like awaiting Kirito's awakening for so so long it's finally coming and uh, yeah like uh, I was fr frustrated uh, a lot of these episodes I was extremely frustrated because of all of the things that were happening and like all the disadvantages uh, face, faced by our teammates and everything so I hope we'll see an end to that uh, so yeah without further ado let's get started with episode number six of SAO uh, War of the Underworld 2 and I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started okay I'll be counting down three two one go Okay, this is a classroom or the unconscious world or mind of Kirito. It's all head home. What home? Like, is he like... Uh, Yeah, and this is like a type of cage for him where he's forgotten almost everything. And there she is. So, like the, res the residual memories, I think, of the different people we have met. Lugio. Damn, there's like... Okay, who was... whose voice was that? Oh! Uh, what was the name? I forgot. Sachi, Sachi, yeah. Wow, like I didn't expect that. Like uh, Sachi was at season one, like almost at the beginning. And after so many episodes, suddenly like uh, her being here, like, <laughs> okay. I think this episode really like uh, him relieving his memories or finding his lost um, memories everything because the thing is like uh, he remembers everything like it, it it is like lodged deep in his unconsciousness so but he's uh, unable to find it so he is unable to like recognize himself or the people around him and he's in a coma like it was like explained before in a more proper way like what happened to him and I think it is something like that, like he, he, his outer shell and his inner everything, like they're, they're like gone and the residual memories he has, it has to be like, oh wow, this is new, okay, this is new, the last portion of the opening, the residual portion of his memory has to be like triggered so that he can remember again. Oh my god, that's a... Uh, 
Okay. There's brainwashing them. Well, that's... I'm going to talk about something later on, uh, if I remember. Like, it's quite an interesting thing I came upon. Oh my god, he's going to like... He's going to like involve other people, like, what the... Ooh. Oh, Yuki. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Wound him, at least wound him. Oh my god. <sighs> okay. What? He slipped? Okay, now. Come on, counter attack, counter attack. Oh no. Well, we, we don't need that kind of love. <laughs> yeah, right, like... Wow, he's also kind of twisted, like, each and every villain is twisted here. Oh my god. Okay, I get it. What he's trying to say. What? Oh, okay. No, he got that. Would go up and slash by your player. Okay. Okay, like, ah. Uh, Wow. <laughs> this guy is like... breaking come on like 
something happened okay okay yuki oh my god what is this is there power which is like um, bounded to her account awakening or something well she is technically a goddess like the, her account is so she has i mean a lot of power i guess and here we go okay come on come on hit him hit him smack him do whatever you want okay damn yes yes <laughs> come on come on <laughs> a few more a few more <laughs> i'm enjoying this a, a bit too much i'm sorry about that um okay calm down <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh my god. This is so satisfying like seeing his face like that. <laughs> oh. Hmm, okay. Well, at least like you won't interfere now. Oh no, I I'm oh great. Oh his sword. Not him. What the Wait, is this weapon controlling him now? Or or not? Oh no no. Oh my god, like this guy <laughs> spews such crap like Oh my god. Like to influence people you have to be a crap talker. Like this proves that. Oh my god. Oh. Well. Okay, so Well, at least he remembered that he's from SAO. Hmm. Well. Oh my god. <clears throat> okay. Hmm. 
that's cream <laughs> well the only good thing about ALO was Sugo's death like I really enjoyed that such a scumbag I mean this garbage of a character like ALO was kind of meh for me like uh, it was nothing too good I really loved GGO the most like yeah the scene on arc dead gun arc and uh, the thing that ruined ALO for me was mainly Sugo and that uh, thing that was that uh, kidnapping thing uh, uh, capturing Azun and everything like that those things kind of like ruined ALO for me I really did not like it Alicization is obviously the best, one of the best the series have to, has to offer. <sighs> well, at least he is remembering, like. Um, Oh my god, stop! Um, please stop that! Oh my god. Um, will please stop that? Um, Kirito, this is. Oh god. Oh no, no. Oh god, like, ugh. Well, um, uh, we have a person, a candidate, but object, uh, okay, like a floodlight, you can, or Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's something I also have to talk about with this part. I'll talk it up, talk about it later on after the episode ends. Okay, we have the whole squad here, and he's getting resurrected. <laughs> Come on. Oh, great. Oh, 
Oh my god. Um, hello? Who the hell are you? Scent of roses? Rose is like uh, the thing for Yu-Gi-Oh! Isn't it? Blue rose. He's up. Okay, he's up. Okay, one shot him, please. Please one shot him. Well, technically it is a one shot, but still. Okay, hmm, well, he woke up. Wait, this is the sixth episode, uh, there are like, okay, well, I knew this is going to be not so easy. Um, no. Okay. Okay, what is this? Who the hell? The Skirito, is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Wait, what? What was that? Like... Okay! Well... Hmm... We're waiting for this moment for like, uh, from the previous season. Not this season, from the previous season. Finally, it, it is here. Like. Okay. Thank God. Okay, like. <laughs> like, uh. I think the power balance is pretty balanced now. But still, like, uh, the enemy has a bit of advantage, but still, it is kind of balanced now. Well, like, because, like, Kirito is like a one-man army. He can, <laughs> he can, like, um, like, just destroy each and every, like, he can, like, literally destroy armies single-handedly. And that, my, everyone is... The pro of video gaming every time. <laughs> you become such a beast that. <laughs> oh, but by. Oh, oh no, uh, the thing is here, like, he is uh, living in the underworld from a very young age because of that fluctuate, uh, fluctuate acceleration thing. So, like, here he would be more powerful because he uh, grew up in an environment where swords and magic were like uh, at the norm and uh, unlike the real world where like uh, it's only in video games we get you get these kind of things like uh, sword sword skills uh, guns and weapons and stuff like these uh, awakening okay so as i was saying like uh, he grew up in a place where these kind of things were normal like fighting with weapons and everything but in the real world uh, he, uh, those things like only exist in video games so i think like uh, him being such a pro at video gaming and uh, him also like growing up in underworld uh, from a small age that kind of like uh, resulted together in more skill i think i don't know just anyways uh, okay so this was ep episode number uh, six
of SAO Underworld 2 and uh, okay uh, the few things that I wanted to talk about was like uh, first of all uh, one thing I uh, just kind of came into my mind that was like uh, like uh, in this kind of things like in virtual reality reality uh, like in this kind of virtual reality uh, where people kind of full dive uh, we see in RPGs and everything uh, different type of skills like confusion um, taunt uh, sleep and what else silence poison burn bleed these kind of things and uh, these like this being a virtual reality where you full dive uh, if you get uh, afflicted by these debuffs like these things that means these things like happen to your own body like for example burn then uh, like uh, in in a video game we literally see like an icon like uh, with burning and in each turn you kind of get like uh, health damage at the end of each turn because of that burn effect and uh, that's that's just the thing that happens but here the person who gets afflicted by burn is like literally burning and getting hurt and uh, <laughs> like like that must be painful and so I was thinking like these kind of things like uh, these kind of things also like become reality in virtual reality so that that's the reason why there's a pain absorber I think like that pain absorber thing where it kind of numbs the damage that you get or you do not uh, get the damage at all um, that was the reason why I think and uh, it, this just came into my mind this was just like <laughs> a thing that suddenly came into my mind and uh, yeah let's talk about this episode um, first of all um, we saw like Kirito uh, relieving his memories and here is the thing like uh, as they said before like Kirito is not unable to recognize uh, because of that thing that happened like short circuit or whatever I, I can't remember the technical term but the thing that happened at the end of the first season of uh, Alicization um, and so he was unable to recognize anyone and he's also unable to recognize himself and uh, like that does not mean that the thing has those kind of memories have gone away they're like hidden in the unconscious and that was the reason why they were like showing this classroom and him uh, like uh, mo uh, traveling in a train uh, but uh, a few uh, meters apart Yujo was sitting like they are situated there but Kito was unable to recognize them or take note notice of them that was the thing that was literally happening here and I think that uh, kind of thing was done quite well here like they kind of like gave a visual rep representation of whatever that was happening in Kirito's mind and uh, like uh, brought it out into light uh, by using different characters and animation and now one thing I do not understand here is like we saw like Kirito break down and crying and everything breaking down and crying like uh, I get it that he has had a lot of like um, what do you call it uh, no. what do you call it like he kind of blames himself for, for a lot of things in, in SAO and everything like the first thing he blames himself is that Sachi's death and all, all of those other people's death the second thing he blames himself is that um, <clears throat> what was that uh, what else does he blame himself of oh yeah uh, the people whom he killed the red players he also kind of like blamed himself for un uh, blame, unable to uh, uh, remember them and like he thought himself to be a, like a, a murderer or a killer because of that or uh, of him and uh, those kind of things like uh, they, he blamed himself on that but like um, other than that like why did why was Kirito like breaking down in this episode uh, like was it because he was like relieving those memories and uh, was that the reason like uh, in Alicization, as far as I can remember, he did not do anything that he can blame himself from. For like, uh, there was literally nothing. Everything he did was for others. Like uh, he tried to rescue Alice. Uh, he uh, also like uh, did that uh, that rape incident. He also saved uh, 
the uh, juniors I forgot their name also uh, the junior candidates uh, and killed uh, those two Nobel people uh, high-ranking people or whatever they were so like uh, that must be it that he was like relieving those memories so like uh, those were the, the that was the reason why because uh, the only thing can I, I can kind of like uh, think about is like SAO and um, GGO like these two were the uh, series where he kind of like blames himself for a lot of things uh, in SAO those Sachi's death and everyone in GGO uh, his um, un, uh, like inability to remember the people whom he have killed and uh, but there's nothing in isolation so I think like he because of him relieving those memories he kind of like broke down and here's another thing like <laughs> like I've seen in a lot of comments and everything like people were saying like uh, when the girls were like uh, calling him <laughs> like wake up Kirito wake up he said nah I don't want to wake up and then <laughs> when Yuji comes in and Yuji says like um come on bro what the hell are you doing wake up <laughs> and he wakes up immediately and um, <laughs> That was also the thing that happened in this episode and I kind of get the reason why that is because like um, in Alicization he literally spent a lifetime getting acquainted with Yujio and Alice because of that acceleration thing and uh, like uh, growing up with a kid with a friend of yours uh, versus uh, remembering someone for whom you have like known for like two or three years uh, for example uh, Asuna, Sinon but uh, Lifa was kind of like an uh, exception because she was like uh, her cousin, his cousin oh no no Lifa is also not an exception because Lifa's uh, family took uh, Kirito's uh, custody a lot later so Lifa is, has also like kind of spent a lot less time with Kirito than Alice now Alice has also not spent a lot of time because she was captured. Uh, Yujio, Yujio is the only one. Like Yujio is the only one here with whom he has spent his whole life. Like not his whole life, but up until he is alive. So obviously he is going to like uh, make a bigger impression on him, and not a bigger impression, but he was that kind of like the last thing that kind of gave him the push to wake up. And I think that is the reason. And uh, what else? What else was in this episode? We uh, we saw that um, y Yuki kind of came in uh, in uh, Asuna's mind and everything. And uh, I think that is like kind of symbol, a kind of symbolic thing. Not literally did not Yuki like did not came here, but it was like in Asuna's mind, her motivation, her self, whatever that is called, um, self uh, de determination or. or um, whatever that is <clears throat> that was Yuki like Yuki was symbolic here and uh, what else we saw Pu doing some like Pu and his twisted sense of love <laughs> towards Ki Kirito <laughs> oh god like <laughs> like the, can these weirdos like give it a rest like we already have like one and two, two weirdos here. First one is like Vector, and the second one is like that guy mm, uh, who is kind of like uh, infatuated with uh, Quinella, uh, the guy with the gun in the real world, and uh, Yanai or something like that. Yeah, Yanai was his name. And then uh, we then this this weirdo gets added, like who. <laughs> and what else um, oh and we saw that Asuna's new power like that wing thing uh, as I was saying like that must be like his uh, like her accounts power her account is like literally a goddess so I think that was must be like that power the special kind of power which that account has mm, and what else and we saw like Kirito relieving those memories and everything Most of this episode was like flashbacks um, of Kirito and oh another thing like the thing that Kirito did with his chest like gorging out flesh 
that was a bit uncomfortable like um okay i guess like we saw a lot of blood before as well in anesthetization uh like <laughs> like uh, lifa's eyes getting pierced and um quinella's hand and everything this is nothing this is like and uh, what else yeah due to yuju and uh, the other f friends got the stimulus to wake up and what else uh yeah he woke up and he did that kind of shield thing and i did not get that part like uh, there was like a hand in front of alzona that uh, made that barrier but when kirito wake woke uh, like woke up and started walking towards them we saw that he did not have a hand and then suddenly a hand appeared in the original place it supposed to, it was supposed to be attached like in his wrist and he then kind of like took like did this kind of thing in the other hand that was erecting the barrier and uh, like was that some kind of uh, skill i think that was some kind of skill and um, what else yeah that was it i guess yeah then kirito took things in his hands and in the next episode i think <laughs> kirito is going to like uh, teach who a lesson a very good lesson and we've not seen vector for a quite a few episodes and uh, I think after Pooh is going to get defeated, he's going to come in and Kito is going to teach him some uh, discipline as well. So I'm really quite excited to see how <laughs> Kito <laughs> teaches his, um, what do you call it, uh, teaches people to be more uh, disciplined and everything and uh, not, and I ha hope that these guys what do you call it this guys learn the lessons <laughs> okay that was this episode um this was episode number six of sao um isolation uh war of the underworld and uh yeah finally like i think finally like uh i like it's going to the infuriation parts are going to like start uh decreasing because Kirito is up finally and they have like a huge advantage at their side so yeah <laughs> like um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to like have fun seeing these people getting wrecked <laughs> seeing the enemy enemy people getting like pulverized <laughs> I'm looking forward to that okay thank you guys for watching if you guys enjoyed my reaction press that thumbs up button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and uh, comment down below your opinions about this episode anything you want to talk about in the comment section and uh, yeah i'll be back with the new sword art online uh, war of the underworld 2 episode next week until then goodbye and have a nice day